Hello, and welcome to another one of my Star Trek Best Jerry videos. As this is the end of October, I wanted to do a video on a haunted or ghostly being from Trek, and I thought of both Alice from Voyager, or that ghostly alien that haunted the Crusher family for a time. So anyway, here's a video on a sentient shuttlecraft haunted by a deranged AI. Picture the scene. You're perusing the wares of a salvage yard, tossing aside junk and the occasional item of mild interest when your eye catches the hull of a complete compact shuttlecraft. There's something about it, you can't place it, but you know it's a find. Over the next few days, your work on it becomes all-consuming. You don't sleep, you barely eat, and all that matters is that you get that ship in the air, and soon it haunts your every waking moment. Out of the corner of your eye, you swear you see a new person, yet somehow familiar watching you. Whispers in your ear in the dead of night urge you to continue your work, and soon you're enraptured by the reconstruction of this alluring vessel. Nothing else matters but this small craft, and you work tirelessly for the day you get to fly it. This is the recurring tale tied to the vessel of no name but termed Alice by Federation pilot Tom Paris. This ship had a central artificial intelligence that has only one directive, to find a compatible pilot and return home seemingly at any cost. Nothing too insidious so far, but it's the neurogenic interface system that makes it into a threat. This was a system that entwined the pilot's own thoughts with the ship's systems to increase reaction time and reduce latency to zero. The notion is that you think a manoeuvre and Alice obliges instantly. Operations, tactical, sensors and flight control all relay through the neural interface. However, whether by design or fault, there is little regulation as to the extent of this merger, and the directive Alice has to return causes her to manipulate her pilots. The vessel itself was a very speedy one-seater with optronic weaponry and multi-phasic shielding, although when acquired by Paris it was in serious need of major repairs. By the time the vessel was in a fully operational state, the entire navigational deflector array, impulse reactor, plasma manifold and numerous power cells had to be replaced. Clearly the vessel had seen some action. It had ended up in Abaddon's scrapyard after being sold to him by a Harkonian captain who claimed that the vessel was haunted, clearly a victim of Alice's neural machinations. Abaddon, a man with an apt if unfortunate name, attempted to refurbish the vessel into a workhorse tug, but Alice had other ideas and continually broke down and demanded replacement parts, proving temperamental. As Abaddon had used the neurogenic interface, Alice was able to infiltrate his mind and demand that he find her a compatible pilot. Much more information about its origin, logs and prior adventures has been lost as the database core showed signs of attempted wiping, leaving little information to piece together the vessel's entire story. There were still the design specs for both Alice and its interface pilot suit, but little else. I always interpreted the degradation of its database as an attempt by a former victim to kill Alice by wiping its core, an attempt which failed, but who knows. Maybe the loss of information is what resulted in the vessel's dangerous behaviour, a malfunction. Whatever the vessel's origin, once a person sat in its sole pilot's chair and activated the neurogenic interface, the connection established between the ship and pilot was continual and easily maintained over light years of distance. On first activation, Alice read the pilot's neural chemistry and was able to gradually alter it to enable communication with the host. It scanned the pilot's mind and learned everything about its target from language to personal history. The ship would then appeal to the personality of the pilot in an effort to get itself into operational order in an attempt to return home. Not only was the manipulation done through temptation, but Alice created a sense of obsession in its pilot, altering brain chemistry to place itself as the priority above all other concerns, eventually including health. Alice would manifest hallucinations in order to aid the chosen pilot in personifying the vessel, building a relationship with its victim. 
These images were in a form that the linked mind finds attractive, and one of the first manipulations seems to be the desire to keep the hallucinations secret from others. Should the victim begin to resist, however, Alice was perfectly capable of replacing the carrot with the stick and would threaten the pilots with the pain of a neural hemorrhage. This combined with her increasingly aggressive manipulations and the exhaustion left the victim feeling like they were in a dreamlike state. A specialised flight suit increased the neural link effect, and the modifications bound the pilot's entire nervous system to the ship. And can I just point out that Paris was unaware of the modifications to the flight suit that Alice had made to increase the level of neurogenic linking? Either Alice, within the confines of the vessel, or from the suit itself, could fabricate extra connectors, or she manipulated Paris into doing it to himself without his awareness. Both of these options are terrifying. A full link eventually bound the pilot up in wires to the pilot's chair, and led to the eventual wasting of the victim's body, beginning with numbness in the arms, as the nervous system was usurped by Alice. Fortunately, the neurological linking and damage can be detected by a simple medical scan and rectified with a cortical suppressant. Alice did have some control over its own functions beyond the need for a pilot. It could create a dampening field and manipulate its own environmental settings as well as power levels, as seen when it attempted to suffocate Belana Torres by sealing her in its hull and draining the air supply in order to remove a perceived obstacle to Alice's mission. Alice was specifically looking for a compatible pilot, one skilled enough to navigate a destructive anomaly called a particle fountain, and would disregard those that were not able enough. A particle fountain was a poorly understood spatial hazard by Starfleet. This was because, in order to get close enough to take the necessary scans, the stream of particles and interference produced often destroyed vessels. Starfleet had lost over a dozen vessels trying to understand these rare formations. The strange thing is that Alice referred to the fountain as home. So what do we know for certain? Well, the particle fountain is just that, a spray of stuff, which suggests it's coming from somewhere. It's not the jet stream of a black hole. Starfleet would have easily recognised that, surely. So is it a sort of white hole? The opening end of a wormhole ejecting matter into our universe? Purely speculation, it could be an opening to another universe, one end sucking matter in, in one reality, the other depositing it into the prime universe. So here's my theory for Alice's origin. The vessel is from an alternate universe, or another point in ours. I feel confident in saying this as Alice had warp drive, and was designed for a humanoid pilot, so physics and biology worked the same wherever Alice originated. The vessel was sucked into the phenomena, the other end of the particle fountain, before being spewed violently out of the end in the delta quadrant. It took major damage and its original pilot died, so it begins to attempt to follow some return protocol to go home. Over time, and fear of the neurogenic link, pilots attempt to repair, modify and destroy the vessel until its AI ends up deranged and without any safety regulations for its linking technology, becomes the haunted vessel it is in the Voyager episode. Of course, as its age is completely unknown like its history, it could simply have been an insane AI by malfunction and use. So thanks for watching this bestiary on this spooky ship. A lesson in obsession from a vessel with a mission. And I've been Rick and maybe I'll see you soon? Goodbye. <laughs>